Hey, what's up everyone? Um, Welcome to my first ever podcast brought to you by the Irish Sponge. No sponsor yet, but um, hopefully I can get Yeti to sponsor me. Not advertising or anything, but it is a very good mic. Um, Is that unprofessional if I have it in the picture? Seize out. Maybe I'll have a bit closer. Anyway, fuck it. Um, I'm gonna just do this for fun, to be honest. I've I've wanted to actually do this for about a year. Um, I came up with the idea, but I I wasn't really sure about how to do it. Um, I didn't know if it had to be like fancy or anything, but I just started listening to podcasts. I kind of got into them about a year ago. Um, and I just was really nervous because I'm nervous recording myself. I'm self conscious about my voice. Um. And I started making YouTube as well. I'm going on a big side channel here, but I will get to the point of what I'm saying. Um, so I started YouTube. I love YouTube. I fucking watch YouTube all the time. I love all kinds. Of, like, I love gaming videos. I love reaction videos. I, I just love YouTube. That's a bit basic. I know it's not a very like niche thing. Like who doesn't love YouTube? But I just I will watch anything. Honestly, um, I don't know how good or bad it is, but anyway. Um, so yeah, and I was like, what if I start my own channel? And I kind of, I had those kind of fantasies in my head for a while, and I was like, no, nah, I'll never be able to do YouTube, like, I'm too awkward, I'm self-conscious of my voice. I tried recording myself, like, doing kind of, I don't know, like, vlogs, and they just kind of go awkward because I forget what I'm saying. Um, because if you know me in real life, when I go to talk to people, I, like, forget what I'm saying halfway through, and I forget the original point and so yeah the podcast kind of came to me and I was like because I started going, getting into podcasts listening to stuff like um Joe Rogan I listen to Comtown as well um who else I listen to I also listen to Duolingo does a good podcast as well for listening to friend and it's great because it's, it's kind of like radio it's just kind of this generation's radio because you can just kind of like you can just stick it on and listen to it and you don't need to worry about ads or like annoying fucking DJs being like, oh my god, check out this 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 um this product because like when I used to listen to the radio, I stopped listening to the radio because I used to like it, but when you actually think about it, most of it is just waiting for them to play music, like, and the ones on like Irish radio, I think they're pretty annoying. Um, there's a few kind of famous ones like I'm trying to think, Lottie Ryan. 2FM damn I haven't listened to the radio in so long I used to know like all of the DJs on it um there's actually a famous one called well he I don't think he's like internationally famous but he passed away like a good few years ago now Tony Fenton he was pretty famous I actually used to listen to him he was an interesting guy um what else was there BBC is actually interesting for a podcast I don't know if they're podcasts they were kind of before their time. They used to have really interesting radio stuff. And they didn't have any ads in fairness to them. Um, and yeah, so I I got into podcasts and listening to things like that. Just kind of when I'd be doing stuff at home. Like, I know, clean my room. Just interesting ways. So it'd be better than just like listening to silence. Because whenever I listen to, to, like, to music, I would just get too distracted. Because I'd listen to a few cup songs in the background and a good song would come on and I'd end up like playing that song on repeat and then needless to say the task I was trying to do would never get done so I just used to put on podcasts um I listened to a teen psychology podcast um I can't remember what it's called this was over a year now but he it was a doctor I think like a psychologist and child psychologist and he would just talk about kind of common stuff like oh why am I feeling anxious why am I feeling depressed is this normal I listened to that for a while and got into content and got into kind of Duolingo French podcast because um, I'm learning French. I'm actually going to France in a couple of weeks. Um, and what else did I get into? Yeah, I got into Joe Rogan. Um, I know he is pretty controversial. He has some interesting views, anyway, to say the least. But um, I, I, I think he's really cool because I can kind of relate to him because he's just like he doesn't claim to be like a smart guy or like an intellectual or anything. He's just kind of like. A guy who has people on it um, and just having conversations. Um, I know he's c- kind of come 
come under fire because he's had um controversial people on it he's had um some far right people on it some kind of i wouldn't say far right but kind of going into far right um and he's had just some controversial people on there that um he has people like ben shapiro blair white um and i think that's i think there's kind of a fine line because i believe in freedom of speech um but like i i don't know if i'd be an absolutist for free speech because it's it's difficult honestly when you think about it because there's a, a spectrum obviously um of you know different opinions um there is obviously like not controversial stuff like oh i like pineapple on pizza like that's you're not gonna fucking get fired for having views like that obviously and then there's obviously the more controversial stuff such as um sorry my hands are like this because the camera is like back to front obviously so it's a bit confusing but what what i'm trying to say is like i believe people should be able to say stuff that isn't going to cause harm to people in a nutshell like saying how would, how would i phrase it i believe that people should be able to say stuff that they want without being risk of being fired or being like cancelled i would be very against cancel culture but it's it's also it's also because people may hold more controversial views on things such as say human rights or people's right to exist um and I, I think that's especially come under the last couple of years. I think tensions have risen, especially with COVID and stuff such as, obviously, like politics, like the transition from Trump to to Biden, um, Black Lives Matter, um, vaccines arising from COVID. I think everything has gone really political. Like everything has been politicized, really. Um, I can I can kind of understand um the 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 vaccine even though it shouldn't be political per se it has because it's because you know coronavirus has impacted people's lives so much um and never I don't think has a virus or a disease like overridden our lives so much impacted it so much and people got so divided like um I didn't get my my booster because um i plan to don't worry but um i have a phobia of needles and blood and oh like um i don't i don't know i know like vaccines aren't you're not going to see the blood obviously but i have a just a, a fear of needles um it's i know it's quite an irrational one because i know like the vaccines they're you know there to protect you and people were very judgy at me because i I was kind of like oh i'm not sure yet i'm just a bit iffy about needles i know there's no harm obviously uh well very very very, very small tiny percentage of possible harm caused by you know boosters etc um but i'm not i'm not anti-vax or anything i'm very pro-science but um anyway so yeah people were quite judgy at me for not for not um not wanting a bit hesitant about the vax i wouldn't have vaccine has but i was a bit kind of you know scared obviously and I was a bit fearful and I was just kind of putting it off till I got it and um I I genuinely just forgot to get it in the end um and I did get double vaccinated but I feel there was like this big it was a very difficult you know ground to touch on because people the vast majority of people you know were getting vaccines and they were like it's for the greater good that's why I would have got to not even really for myself but for my family who might have been more nervous um and but there was also a lot of misinformation about you know vaccines obviously um especially among more you know right-wing people um and there was just a big huge discourse as you know obviously you've been living in the real world um yourself if you're watching this and seeing what it's like and how it has an impact and um I, I didn't mean to start off this in such a depressing kind of light or sort of political controversial but um 
anyway so yeah that's how I go back to Joe Rogan um, I think he's just very interesting because he's just a guy having a conversation um, I wish however he'd probably put more varied people on it because obviously linking to what we're saying about previously for that um those people have a right to their opinion but it's difficult to kind of platform them because i don't i wouldn't say they should be platformed people like to say alex jones i think he's a far right commentator i think that's his name um blair white they hold quite dangerous views um they've you know misinformation things like that and when they put get put onto a um a popular platform such as joe rogan's one um which is the you know it's the most popular one on spotify i believe um millions hundreds of millions of listeners i believe and when those people get onto the podcast and those people are listening to them and they're gonna start kind of when they're on such a professional platform professional is that the word i don't think it's the right word i'm using but when they're on such a mainstream and like like it's well good quality podcast it's not like it's not a little underground far right podcast like this is mainstream people can anyone can turn on to that and listen to it um and because they're such a popular platform obviously like people are going to start listening to that i mean like that sounds okay or i agree with them and um because they've been on platform on such a big thing you know they've mass appeal and i think that could be bad because I don't know too much about some of the guests he's had on the more controversial ones. I do love the majority of his podcast. I think he's very interesting. Um, I wouldn't agree with absolutely everything he says. Um, I think he has a he said a few things that will kind of ruffle my feathers a bit. But um, I think ninety nine percent of his podcast is very good. Um, I have to say. Um, but people such as people he's had on us, such as Ben Shapiro, um. Blair Weiss, Milo Yannapol, I don't know how to say his name, but I do know his views and um, those people are, they're, I don't think they should be platformed on a big, on like a mainstream level, um, like um, I'm just listing those people because I, I know them and their views so I can kind of talk about them, but um, um, they all kind of hold very dangerous views. I don't think they should be platformed on a on a large scale. Um, so ben Shapiro, he holds um, interesting views on transgender community um, and on, on abortion, and he kind of represents, he's kind of like a poster boy for alt slice alt right kind of you know what i mean like not quite far right but almost getting there um and he's kind of like a poster boy for as well for kind of young conservatives and um don't get me wrong i don't hate conservatives um each to their own i don't agree with them um a lot of what they have to say besides perhaps freedom of speech but as I said like it's difficult to kind of you know like what is the line between your opinion and dangerous ideas so Ben Shapiro he holds I wouldn't say dangerous views but he he does he's known to kind of distort the facts in his favor and people might listen to his things and be like oh he's he's good um he sounds intelligent and also because he he speaks quickly and quite eloquently he uses big words people are unfortunately taken in by this um and Blair White is also she's a transgender lady um I would have kind of I would have agreed with her in the past but when I actually kind of take a step back she doesn't have good views she she's um she's kind of like what's the word she's kind of the acceptable face of the transgender community she doesn't actually represent a lot of what they have to say and um, she's kind of like the good transgender um transgender person like 
all her views because she's kind of an outcast she she's acceptable for me being you know transphobic or whatever basically if you look at her videos a lot of them are kind of painting trans people as weirdos or like predators and she is a trans person herself so this is kind of weird but um she she also she kind of invalidates um alternative identities from the gender binary such as which is male and female such as non-binary or xenogenders or that kind of thing um that might sound a bit strange to people listen to that basically they're people who fall outside of gender binary no binary has actually become quite common and she's people the likes of her would kind of put stuff up like that like oh this is a new agenda it's a it's a no, basically like another moral panic the transgender agenda like oh they want to turn our kids trans and that kind of stuff um yeah and i think it's the reason why it's become popular or not even more popular these people have always existed i think it's just because it, well, it has a name now non-binary and there's more community of people the rise of the internet people are becoming more accepting of people we progress as society i don't think this is like there's suddenly a load of transgender people like um i i read somewhere that um i don't have a source now but i read somewhere that like a lot of people like youth now nearly 50 percent or something like that are part of the lgbt community um they might be bisexual or they expressed a pref like a not preference sorry like a desire for the attract like an attraction for the for the same sex or um people who present that sex or whatever but like bisexual basically um pansexual whatever and i think that's very interesting because a common talking point among conservatives is um they like to say stuff like oh this is a new thing as i said before like this is a new thing um and they're they just can't basically deal with the fact that you know being lgbt what are they know qia plus is um acceptable now and it's okay and now it's without hopefully less stigma than it was before and we've become more accepting you know progressive as a society um and yeah blair white she's she's um she's conservative as you know and um unfortunately joe rogan had her oh sorry the other stuff she would put on her channel would be yeah, predators that kind of thing um uh, validation of um people who'd follow the gender binary um and also the which i didn't finish speaking about um and also what else would she put in her podcast or sorry not her podcast her youtube channel just kind of contrarian stuff from transgender discourse sorry didn't mean to knock the mic um what else she'd go against the vast majority of the transgender community um there's one other thing oh yeah the detransition thing this just mm, basically conservatives like to put on their platforms or Ben Shapiro likes of them stuff like um oh this t- tiny little majority of transgender people like we're talking 0.1% of them uh you know detransitioned where they reverse their transgender I then like their they would have come off hormones or whatever whatever detransition means to them and conservatives do not care about detransition people or their struggles or whatever they just like to use this as a, a kind of a, a way of using it against the vast majority of transgender people who do end up fully transitioning to their desire um like oh this isn't good and they're influencing trans this is a new trans agenda where they're trying to get people transition and then they don't like it and then they're confused and mess up and stuff um no because huge majority of transgender people end up transitioning to their you know desired desired um body um such as they might want to socially transition which is harmless like nothing's gonna happen say they go by a different name one day and then they come back like nothing's changed really um and say they decide to get top surgery like to get breasts say they're trans lady um they get breasts just for example say um and then sorry what was i originally talking about yeah that's 
basically transitioning and then say they suddenly be like oh well I'm not very happy about this and now they've had this irreversible change now but that is tiny like um and the vast majority of people who do transition like say that this isn't a proper statistic say the five percent of people who don't end up who end up regretting their transition the vast majority of that majority sorry minority are are because of um not because um what they felt but because of say their parents don't approve of it because of social issues not because they themselves didn't like it um which and that just annoys me because it speaks they're trying to speak for trans people and um sorry lastly the the third person is Milo Yiannopoulos I think is his name um I'm not even gonna go into him I'm wasting too much time on these these bad people (laughs) um well I'm not gonna say bad people but they're entitled to their views but I I don't agree with them and I think they are quite dangerous views I don't think they should be platformed on a mainstream thing but that is a little blip in my Joe Rogan podcast but um yeah anyway sorry I did not mean to go on for that long but I think it was important to address this um I I want to get back to transgender things because my topics because um as you know it's it's pride month and I might do a little shout out to you know pride month um it was actually the Dublin pride parade today I didn't get to I didn't get to go down. Um, I was meant to be with my friend, going to be with my friend, but she was away and uh, she didn't get back to me. But um, it was, it was really bad weather today. I don't think I'd be bothered going. But um, shout out to any of the LGBT community. Um, and I have you know lots of friends who are LGBT. Um, I am LGBT, so <laughs> yes, <laughs> so um. I will I will probably get back to it because my my podcast anyway um I didn't really have a topic as I said before I didn't really have a topic I wanted to talk about nothing in particular um why I f- suddenly had the, the confidence to to start my podcast was my YouTube channel um is the Irish Sponge obviously as you're watching it right now um I'm also putting this on Spotify and iTunes hopefully I can get it onto iTunes. Um, I don't really use it but much. I use Spotify, not gonna lie. Um, but anyway, I'm kind of just doing this winging all this, so I don't. Re- I'm not gonna really go back and edit this. I really cannot be arsed doing a whole hour. This isn't gonna. This is gonna be an hour roughly. Um, I didn't really know how to like plan this or anything. Um, so this most of this is gonna be just me rambling. But you can stick this on in the background of whatever you're doing and listen to me ramble. Um, and hopefully this will be entertaining to you and um, I plan to maybe educate a few people um, or interest them, titillate them, wrong choice of words, interest, hold their interest. Um, but yeah, so what I wanted to do maybe was... Um, Sorry, wait. My YouTube channel. I'm so bad at this. My YouTube channel. Basically, what I wanted to do was, I started doing a few videos, and I was really self-conscious about my voice. That was the main thing holding me back, and even seeing myself on camera, and remembering what I was talking about two seconds ago was also another big barrier. But anyway, sure, I got into it, and I've kind of kicked off a little bit. As of now, I have 24 subscribers, and it's not amazing, but it's 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 a big start for me. That was the main thing was kind of um kind of what's the word growing pains like kind of starting off feeling okay with co- comfortable less self-conscious and i'm actually pretty comfortable doing this now now i've kind of you know gone past the initial stages so this is the actual beginning of my podcast so my my format is i plan to pick a topic and talk about it um hopefully interest you educate you maybe a little bit even um and maybe at the end do like 10 15 minutes of maybe real world news unfortunately i have no actual like topic to talk about today um i didn't actually pick one i just just like i forgot i'll just sit down and talk and introduce myself and stuff um i haven't actually even introduced myself i mean i've done some game reviews for this as of now like my 
my YouTube channel, but I haven't actually, I don't think you guys really know me that well, so, um, yeah, so my name's Holly, and I'm 18 years old, and this is, this is my bedroom. I feel like so old school, I feel like those YouTubers who I used to watch when they'd just be like in their, in their, in their room, like talking to the camera, that's actually what I feel like now, this is very, this is a homemade, like, <laughs> very homemade, this podcast, um, um, and what I started with my podcast, how I started was, today, like, the last few days, I just had an idea, and I was like, oh, you're very good at talking to yourself, having imaginary conversations with yourself for hours on end, why don't you actually, like, turn it into something of use, and that's how this was born, and I actually, my camera I got, um, I managed to get a hold of a chair, and a table, and a microphone so like a fancy one says it's blue yay and i finally saved up for all that stuff so i can finally get my podcast on the road so i'm going to be uploading this to youtube spotify and itunes so yeah so oh my god it's nearly like halfway into the podcast i haven't even said anything of substance <laughs> uh, so for this one i'm just going to be doing real world news because i don't really have anything to talk about i haven't picked a podcast topic yet so if you guys want to want to go down and um comment something below of what you want me to talk i'll talk about literally anything i don't even care anymore i just cannot think of a single thing so i have a lot of things i can talk about but i don't know if that'd be too neat i kind of want to talk about general things not really like um the battle of hastings 1066 i don't think that would be very popular popular thing to talk about not that it's not interesting but i think it'll be a bit niche so um comments below are 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 highly recommended um and and called for so i'm looking on the journal that i wait is it still going yeah um journal dot e um what stuff is going on right now Oslo shooting that left two being treated as an act of Islamic terror. Oh my god, literally every time I go on the news, it's never happy stuff. It's always someone died, someone was in a car crash. Where's happy stuff? Um, hashtag pride. Oh my god, finally something good. A sparkly, colourful pride parade returns to Dublin streets. Um, US guards for second day protested against abortion ruling. Seven accusers write to Ghislaine Maxwell sentencing judge. Um, what will I talk about first? Uh, probably the abortion thing, as that's kind of the main thing of what's um been going on today. I I turned on my phone today and I I went on to um Instagram to see if there was there anything you know what's cooking in the world. If anyone had messaged me and um. Um, yeah, basically, you know, that's how most people now get their news from social media. Um, and I saw Road vs. Way that's been overturned. And I was like, what the hell? Because I didn't, I didn't, I heard about things, it was happening, but I didn't think it was actually going to happen. Considering society now was so progressive. And I didn't think this was still, I just, it's still a thing now. And Jesus, this is like big deal for conservatives now I can just tell um because luckily the last few years have been more progressive um nothing really crazy has happened I wouldn't say besides maybe you know Mr. Trump getting in but um and his the events that happened since he got in um but this is this is fucking huge. Um, basically, in a lot of states in America, abortion has effectively like been banned. Um, I believe I think it's six weeks after that it's illegal. Some places, um, I'm not too educated on this, but I wouldn't have all the facts on this. Basically, but um, at some point of fertilization. Um, they're considered like a child so it's illegal and oh my god um i'm not sure how you feel personally watching this um 
like if you're watching this, um, and if if you if you stayed long enough to listen to my, to listen to my bullshit and got through it, but I I myself I'd be I'd be pro-choice. Um, I've I tried to watch the other side, say pro-life people on their point of view, but I just could not. I could not get into their 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 headspace. I am pro-life, true and true. Sorry, wrong thing. Pro-choice. I said the wrong thing. I'm pro-choice, woman's choice, true and true. Um, and I believe that women should have the choice. It should not be the government whatsoever sticking their their nose into women's affairs. And it's just so fucked up because not only is if you're going to be like, oh, but like this is saving lives and stuff, it, it, it doesn't. And a lot of those people agree with the the death penalty. And once those, like I've seen a lot of arguments on it, and like it just doesn't make sense. Like it not only affects women who who have these babies they don't want, but say they go to travel out the state, people are I've heard people are like, oh, you can just leave the state, like you can just go somewhere, like. Um, I don't know about you, but states in America are pretty fucking huge, They're like little countries. And it imagine all that effort and travel and money and cost to go up and just get an abortion. And um, and it disproportionately affects um, Hispanic and black people, like black um, black ladies who be having abortions, um, and their communities. And it's it's just so it's not just the one issue like it it ha- it starts this issue and then there's all these other other issues that stem out because of this and it's it's not about saving lives it's control at the end of the day and i just it's just fucking awful that something excuse my language but i feel very strongly about it. it's just awful that in this day and age things like this are are, are still happening um that this archaic way of thinking and putting down of women and just control of people it's just awful like this was this will be something i'd expect in like 200 years ago like this is awful um so let's go on to the article um the comments will be very interesting. I want to see them. I'm on the journal.ie by the way, which is kind of like it's just like an Irish platform and it has all the original content. It's just like would have all the trending news. Um, so, abortion rights supporters prepared to fan out across America Saturday for a second day protest against the Supreme Court's Thunderbolt ruling. A state after conservative state moves, moves swiftly to ban the procedure. A uh, deeply polarized America woke up to a new level of division. Pretty much like I did. Like I woke up and I was like, "Whoa, what the fuck?" Um, I saw somebody share the post, and that's how I first heard about it this morning. Uh, so between states that will now or soon deny the right to abortion and trying for fifty years, and those that still allow it, literally fools work are going back in time. Um. So yeah, just a lot of protesting. Um. At least eight right-leaning states impose immediate abortion bans with a similar number to follow suit in coming weeks after the court eliminated con- constitutional protections for the procedure, drawn criticism from some of America's closest allies around the world, which they should. Um, Joe Biden called the ruling a tragic error stemming from extreme ideology. Um, spoke out against Saturday morning as he signed a gun control bill. At least that's the one good thing, gun control. Um... Yeah. Well, the ruling represents victory in the struggle against abortion by the religious light, right? Sorry, leaders of the largely Christian conservative movie movement says they not go far enough, and they will push for a nationwide ban. This is just fucking ridiculous. Hold on, I want to see the comments. Um, the greatest democracy on earth. Where a president won without getting the most votes installed Supreme Court justices who misled the committees at their hearings in relation to a decision that they've now reversed. Restricting abortion doesn't save lives, just endangers the lives of women, absolutely. Um, oh god, Morris O'Neill. Is that his kid? 
or is that actually the guy because he looks about he that literally looks like a child in the profile picture um a blessed day was yesterday for rights children room womb sorry god bless the usa courts to make a decision to protect all life what life were they protecting like how many sorry someone replied to how many unwanted children from crisis pregnancy have you adopted yourself This is just fucking ridiculous. I just knew there'd be people like that in the comments, but... God. It's just... It just makes me laugh. It's nothing to do with... Under the disguise of... Protecting women. It's nothing... To, sorry. Protecting babies. It's just nothing to do with... It's just controlling women. And... You know their their um their sexuality and their freedom, and that's all I have to say to it. Um, if you are pro life yourself, watching this, you're entitled to your opinion. Um, but I respectfully I I disagree with you. Um, so that's yeah, that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> Um, what else is there? Seven accusers write to Gidley Maxwell's sentencing judge. Um, unfortunately, as this is an ongoing trial, there's no comments. Um, there's no comments allowed. Um, seven women who say Gidley Maxwell helped Jeffrey Epstein seal the innocence of the youth and poison the promise of her future, asking a judge to consider their pain as she decides what prison sentence she will dispense on Tuesday to the British woman. Um, I'm not sure if you yourself know about um, much about Epstein but that is just fucking insane how I felt for those women so much um, I watched the documentary on Netflix it was a little bit polarising from what I heard I thought it was um, I don't think it really brought anything much original as I kind of knew the story but I guess it's explored more in a little bit depth and it kind of gave a voice to the to the victims um, and the, the pain that Epstein caused to them and it also showed his lawyer Dershowitz um, he, there was quite a controversial bit where what was her name one of the victims believed that Dershowitz um, had relations with her, you know, like a sexual nature, and he was saying like, "Oh, I've never seen this girl. I don't know this girl. Like, I've never seen my life." And he was saying very, very flat out, like, "I did not, you know, with Virginia. I think her name is Virginia. Um, I watched a while ago. I can't remember the names. Um, Alan Dershowitz, who was the lawyer, and she was saying, and other saying like, "Oh, I was assaulted by him and all the stuff." Um, so it was very. It's, difficult, I don't think it got resolved in the end and he actually sued Netflix over the documentary I don't know how I'd feel, he seemed very um, what's the word passionate he was like, I did not da, da. um and she she was also quite adamant so it's, it's hard to say really, I don't know I would believe her but it's I don't know, it's a difficult one um, to say um, what else is there in this sex trafficking conviction um, Annie Farmer testified at trial and spoke at Epstein bail hearing before he killed himself in August well, allegedly killed himself in August 2019 as he waited a sex trafficking trial it says Maxwell's lack of remorse and repeat lies about victims forced in quotes a long fight for justice that has felt like a black hole sucking in our precious time, energy and well-being. Um, I absolutely um, feel for those ladies. Um, and the fact that they still have to have to deal with the, the consequence, not the consequence, like the impact of the events of Epstein and um Maxwell and the way they were treated that 
and, and for all victims of assault um, that to, to their abusers that they wouldn't even think about it but even little things can impact the victims day to day and the fact that there's still so much publicity about this trial and um, I was actually assaulted in school a couple of years ago um, and I still I have a few times as well in situations such as um, nightclubs bars um, not not particularly of a fortunately not like a violent situation such as um, that I couldn't get out of um, but the one time school um, there was a lot of unfortunately victim blaming I w- they were like why were you alone with that guy did you not know or you were asking for it and another thing was um, a lot of his friends of the assaulter were like um, they seemed to be more they were accusing me that I was um, falsely making up um, which it did happen by the way um, which, so I absolutely was not um, and they seem to be more mad that I the possibility that I might be lying about you know being assaulted that more than that his friend was an assaulter and that he took advantage of me that he's like disgraceful that people still think like that and I'm still I'm still I'm still a little bit shook by it um I also blame myself a lot that I didn't that I was so power powerlessness that I put up with it like I took it um and sorry I should have maybe I don't know what the word is like before I start all this um I, put, I don't know what the word is like trigger warning or whatever but um I don't think that it should be closed off I think it should be open to talk about it should be an okay thing to talk about I know for some people it's very difficult to talk about um for me it's I kind of want to grab the boat by the horns I don't think it should be something that should be taboo or oh we shouldn't talk about that or I think it should be out there in the open to talk about but um I absolutely understand it's Dif- I'm respectful, like it's difficult for some people to talk about and be very upsetting so um if if I if I started a bit too soon or whatever um I'm, I'm, I really apologize for that um but yeah that going back to the trial that they still have to deal with the publicity and the effects of it and everything to do with that still and luckily Epstein is going to rot in hell um, and Maxwell is hopefully going to be locked or should be locked away for the rest of her life the key thrown away um, it was very emotional watching the Netflix documentary and I know obviously like they're meant to be kind of emotional and serious but and like, they're geared that way but just her her count of it I could, I could feel the emotion in her voice Um. It w- it was a bit hard to watch at times, um, but uh, yeah, it's, that's all I have to say about it. Um, so sorry, there's just a little bit left at the end I didn't read. Um, um Ghislaine, like Virginia Guffrey, sorry, that was her name, that um accused. Alan Dershowitz of having relations with her um, I don't know if I actually got I don't think it got resolved in the end but anyway um, um, just laying like a wolf in sheep's clothing you used your femininity to betray it and you led us all through it she added you could have put an end to the rapes the molestation mal- 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 the sickening manipulations that you arranged witness and even took part in you could have called the authorities and reported that you were part of something awful, Ghislaine. 
You deserve to spend the rest of your life in jail cell. You deserve to be trapped in a cage forever just like you trapped your victim. I think that's perfect. I think that sums up perfectly how they feel. Um, God, I hope there's something a bit more happier. I mean, not that these topics shouldn't be addressed or anything, but... um. God, I, I I was hoping this would be a bit a bit lighter this podcast. Um, I promise the next one will be a bit more light light hearted. Um, sparkly colorful pride parade returns. Sorry, I'm just trying to look at the link. Um kind of just the usual typical pride um celebrations rainbow clad um more than 800 young lgbtq plus people are taking part and this is very backward bang because obviously it hasn't been on the past couple of years because of um the covid pa- pandemic um mr kenny said that Oh, Jamie Kenny, Operating Outcome Manager's Open Pride. Um, Pride Parade is incredibly important for our community. He said, in the wake of an increase in homophobic and transphobic violence, it's also a time where we can come together. Um, I am delighted I'll be walking alongside my Department of Justice colleagues at Broader Public Service and the Guardi. Um, she welcomed the participation of more than 1,500 public servants from government departments on the guard she conned the HUC and various for- ar- arms of state and pride parade um, I think this pride was um, especially especially um, important this year because of the because of the um, murders of a gay man in Sligo, Aidan Moffat, and there was also a few other, um, as well as like Northern Ireland as well, um, attacks of a transphobic, um, attacks, uh, of you know, of transphobic nature, um, a few other homophobic attacks, and, um, also the in the UK anti trans law, I don't know if they got passed yet or it will be passed. But just ch- the more challenges the LGBT community has faced um, over the last few years, and I luckily they are being more accepted now. Um, like for the vast majority um, of people, like it's okay to be trans, okay to be gay, it's okay to be you know whatever you want to be. Um, but I still feel there is a bit of a judgment still in the air vibe um and i'm talking kind of from a bit of a place of privilege um because i haven't had to really deal with not nothing of a violent nature towards me i've had had bullying in the past um if you know about being lgbt um and the the most more, I think the transgender, the, like the National Health Service for transgender people could definitely be improved. There's people who've been on waiting lists for years to even be seen, and they're also known to even serve that it's not very good. Like, um, they I know that people have gone to and they just ask very like personal questions, um, that some like stuff that's not relevant to being trans, like, um relationship habits or you know like sex habits and people don't really feel naturally enough they don't feel comfortable telling like just the professional like they don't know um and um i i don't know if i said it before but i'm 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 a trans guy i know i look like a girl i'm a girl now but um i i came to that conclusion about a year ago, um, it was very difficult because I was going through a lot of self hatred. I was a very different person than I am now. Um, just morally, socially, 
my views I was um, I had a lot of you know as I said like self-hatred I didn't accept myself I was in disbelief of who I was I wish that I could just be you know a, a straight girl I, like I hated myself I um, it was just very difficult for me um, and I kind of came to that conclusion where I was watching a YouTube video and um, it wasn't because of the YouTube video but it just opened my eyes suddenly and I realised it was just talking about like trans people and it came up on my recommend and I was like oh okay and it was a couple minutes long and that I'm not joking that two minute long video changed my life it was like you don't have to be I can't remember who's by it was quite a simple video it was just a little sketched one and I was just saying like just because you look different on the outside than what you feel on the inside does not mean you're not trans enough and you're enough and that just I know it's very simple and I'm very like I kind of like oversimplifying it but in a nutshell that's what I said and that just spoke to me because I was like how am I ever going to be a girl you're a girl you're never going to be a guy and then that just it just clicked with me and it was it was amazing and even though I knew there was going to be huge hurdles for me being who I want to be um this was huge to me because I finally realised there is a way. It'll take a long time and a lot of money and a lot of patience and pain but there is a way and that was just amazing for me. So I'm as I said I'm speaking from a huge place of privilege um, because in some places in the world you can't even be trans like you can't be who you are or love who you want it's legal um, and they can't even like you know, fucking talk about being whatever without throwing a bitch in jail. So, um, luckily, it it could be better here, but it it's all right for now. Um, but basically, I had to save up a shit ton of money to begin my my hormones. I haven't actually started hormones yet, but I am on a list. And instead of being like five years in Ireland um luckily I probably will have to wait like five weeks so that is a that's a big change it's not perfect but it is much much better um so yeah I had to basically take things in my own hands I paid for a private clinic in the UK and they're gonna set me up with counseling stuff so that that was huge and um that's my little coming out thing for pride <laughs> um so the result 10 minutes left on this podcast so I'll probably finish up fairly soon yeah as I said the next one is going to be a bit more light hearted because I did think I talked some very very touching personal issues in this uh, quite political um, as I said if you're if you want if you like this podcast you know like it and Subscribe obviously and tell me what you comment below what you want me to talk about maybe next. Um comments on this are very interesting, the the pride one. Um a couple of people being assholes in the comments. Um but the vast majority of people I just have retail. Okay, so let's go on to maybe one more thing before I finish up. Mm-mm-mm. Is there anything? Two months of evidence way for ex-school principal facing 90 sex abuse charges. Oh my god. God. 
mad that they put people like that in, in like they're trusted to be in positions of power such as that um Michael Martin has no time for UK style toxic discussion on trans issues. Okay, good for him. Go back to what I said at the start. Um, I don't. I do agree with free speech, but I don't think that things such as human rights, just being, you know, transgender, being of a certain nationality, a certain religion, a certain skin colour, well, religion, as long as it's, as it's not harmful to other people, um, sure, religion, um, or, you know, ethnicity, whatever, whatever you, you want to be, I don't think debating people's existence is, is not on, but, um, I'm up for discourse that does not harm other people's existence, basically, um, Oh, handy. Roundup of what happened. Asking prices rose substantially in the second quarter of this year, with the median asking price for housing loan increasing to four hundred three thousand euros. Oh my God, the number of people, homeless people in Ireland, increased for the fifth month in a row. Not good. Um, climate change. Nothing really. Besides, oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong day. Ha Saturday. Today is indeed Saturday. Um. Um. Dublin Pride Raid returned to the streets of capital on sa Saturday. Um. Pretty much everything that I've talked about. Um. Yeah, so that's it basically. Um, if if this was a bit kind of you know not very well laid out, a bit flaky, I apologize. My first one, my f literally my first time ever doing something like this. So um, thank you if you've stayed this long. Um, I do promise the next one will be a bit better. Um, and yeah, just drop comments if what you want to talk about. I'm really open to anything. Um, so yeah, Star Sponge, um, thank you for, for listening and take care until next time. Goodbye.